Kenya. I'm Bishop Peter Katimu. Love, I love Christ. is my hope, my strength, and my Lord. And I hope you also love Christ. And I trust God. God is so faithful. He started good work in you, in me. The Bible says you continue with it until the day of the Lord. Yes. You know why? The power that is in us, you and me, is the power that Jesus used to fight death. And his power. Fight death. Overcome death. So we have the power that is great, that is so great. <coughs> now we want to embark on, thank you for being with us in our YouTube and our Facebook, uh, Bishop Peter Gatimo, and also Apostolic Faith Church Kenya, uh, Bahati, Apostolic Faith Church, but God bless you so much. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Life of a winner. Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4. Let's get there quickly. Uh -huh. verse, verse 20, or verse 19, verse 18. So they caught them and commanded them not to speak at all. And not to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 19. Acts chapter 4 verse 19. And Peter. But Peter and John answered and said to them. Whether it is right in the sight of God. To listen to you more than to God. You judge. Verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had father threatened them, they left them, they left them, go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what has been done. Verse 22 says, for the man, the man who was healed, who was a lame from birth at the beautiful gate. You know that story in Acts chapter 3. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Verse 23, and being let go, they went and being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who, by the mouth of your servant David said, and then you read the, the other, and then if you go to verse 27, it says, For truly against your holy servant, Jesus Christ, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever you heard and your purpose determined before to be done. And now, Lord, and now, Lord, look at their threats. Look at their threats. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak the word, your word, by stretching out your head to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant. Jesus Christ. Through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. And then for verse 2, 
going on to verse 37, you see how the outcome of this revival or this anointing. You go to chapter 5, the outcome. The church multiplied and people feared God and the church. Now, the, the, the life of a winner is life that has several characteristics. One, you realize the disciples or the apostles had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, the Bible says they were assembled together and suddenly there came from heaven. If you check your Bible, it says suddenly there came from heaven a rushing wind, mighty wind that filled the whole house. And finally it says, and there was fire resting on their hands. <coughs> and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God. They, and they spoke in tongues. And they all spoke in tongues. Now you realize something unique here. This happened in a strategic place, strategic position, and strategic season. It was during the Pentecostal season. Jews from all the world had gathered. Can you imagine at the fullness when the celebration was in fullness? Because when the Pentecostal festival was fully come, which means when it was on climax, Jews from all cities and from all nations had gathered and they were, they were filling the every place, every street. That is what we call a strategic uh, moment, season. And, 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 and you know, you know very well, these Jews were deceived. As you read the book of Matthew 28, it says, when the soldiers who saw Christ rose from, rise from the dead were blind highly, and they spoke not the truth, but lied. Somebody put in their mouths a lie after bribing them. And people had gathered. When, when there was fullness, <coughs> when Pentecostal festival was in its full gear, that's one. Higher. And the disciples were not in the street. They were in upper room, a strategic place. And in upper room, God produced sign, rushing of the wind and fire that came on the house, which was upper. I thank God. God want us to demonstrate his glory in a strategic place where he can be seen. I always tell people, when you are planning a crusade, when you are planning a meeting, you need to be a strategist. We are praying. We are going to where people are. We want to produce the right sign at the right place. We want to demonstrate God's glory where it can be seen. We want to release the word of God where there is an opening where people can truly see and hear what God is doing through us. And, and they were able to see the happening. And people, people withdrew from the festival, from the festival, from Pentecostal celebration, and they gathered aloud the upper room. And the power of God was there. Peter, who used to withdraw, who used to fear, especially when on the Lord to the, to, to, when Christ was being arrested, Peter ran away. Peter lied. But the same Peter, other anointing, stood up on the day of Pentecost and was able to tell people, you people, you killed the Prince of Peace. You, you chose to save the lives of robbers, thieves, and killed Jesus Christ. And Peter said, listen carefully. The Jesus you killed rose from the dead. 
He was saying, Jesus, stop the lie. He rose from the dead and he is seated at the right heart of God the Father. And that's why, because he is alive, awake, glorious, and powerful, and he is on the throne, he has sent his spirit today. He cannot send his spirit if he is still a dead body, rotting in the grave, decaying in the grave. He cannot release such glory when he is dead. He said to them, he is alive. Alive forevermore. Our Jesus is alive. And that's why he is at work in his office. The right hand of God the Father. And I spoke, the word was full of fire. And 3,000 people, one morning, gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Note, these are the 3,000 people that the high priest, <coughs> the elders, were waiting for as the followers of their, their religion, their religion, religion that was antichrist, the religion that has no room for resurrection of Christ, like Sadducees, who never believed in the res resurrection, who are majority. And 3,000 people are now changed and baptized. And the following time, <coughs> it's a following situation now, when Peter and John as they entered the beautiful gate of the temple, in the hour of prayer, they found a, a lame man who has been lame since birth. A person known by everybody who attended the temple. This was a house for all people. So, a house for all people at the gate where all people would pass. There was a lame man from birth who all people knew and would see as they enter and exit the temple. And God brought Peter and James, uh, Peter and John, full of Holy Spirit. Peter had something to give. If you check scripture, Peter said, silver and gold I have none. Peter is saying, now I have been used to this entrance and I always offer you the, some coins, the remainder, the change, the balance that we obtain after shopping, the remains of food, remains of clothing, but the status I'm operating in, anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrected Christ, the power I have cannot give you the remains of food. The power and the glory I possess cannot give you the remain clothing. The power that I have cannot give you the remain the left out of our supper. The power that I have can only make you original just as Christ has your plan in his mind. And Peter said, what I have, what? I have received the anointing that comes with the secrets of the kingdom. I have received power from heaven. I have received the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. As Peter saying, the Holy Spirit that I received has searched all things, even the deep things of God. And as the Holy Spirit searched all things, in the Father, he found that you should have wrecks and jump around. I bring you a package from the Holy Ghost who searches all things. And this is what he obtained in your fire in heaven as he went through. Thus, you have good legs that you should get today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Receive what heaven has for you. Not what culture and history gave you. I want to bring to you what heaven and the throne has for you. Rise up and walk. And that man walked. And as he, you know, as he ran and as he walked and ran, I thank God he never ran away. He never went home. He ran towards the altar in the temple. 
where we had a big gathering of people who got saved on Pentecost today and other people who came to worship. And that man stood at the, end, at the, at, at the altar and Peter said, you people, if you want to know by whose name and by whose authority and what method this man whom you know very well has been healed, know therefore that the Jesus you killed did not decay and never remained in the grave. He has risen from the dead. And he is in the office at the right hand of God the Father. That's why because he is in the office, he is at work. And part of his work is this man has been healed. This man has been healed. This man has been healed. Part of his work is healing this man. And now the Bible says people who are there, people who are there in the temple are severed. 2,000 gave their lives to Jesus Christ. 2,000 gave their lives to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And therefore the church within two days, about two days, it had a membership of about 5,000 plus the upper room gathering, 120, is 5,120. That's a large number. Considering now the population density or growth late at that time could not have reached that. Although this was civilized world at such a time, this was a huge number. And it provoked the leaders. It provoked the Jews leaders, those who arrested Jesus Christ. The Sadducees were provoked. And, and, and now another wave rose up. They arrested the Peter and John. Peter and John. And the Bible says they were taken before the council. If you check uh, in chapter 4, they were taken before uh, the council, the Sadducees. And you know, uh, a large group of this Supreme Council were Sadducees. Who uh, they were taken before Sanhedrin, and about three quarter of this council were Sadducees who never believed in resurrection. And they were asked, "By whose name are you doing this?" The one thing, the one thing is, nobody would have disputed the miracle. That one thing. And number two, the person that was healed. If you check chapter 4 verse 16, Bible says, what shall we do to these people? For indeed that that a notable miracle has been done through them. It is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But so that it is placed no further among people, let us severely threaten them. Severely threaten them. So that we can stop them from reaching out. Let us instill fear on them. Let us severely threaten them. We need to understand how the devil does the work. If he fails in this plan, he uses another one. I remember... One time I was having an issue of a boy who had joined Satanism. And he said, no, no, Bishop, there are two women who used to appear to, to, to him at night. Two women could appear in his bedroom and, and, and demanded that the boy sacrifice his father. And they said, now, we want to give you this item. Walk out of this house. Go and put it on your dad's car. So the following day, your dad, you have a severe fatal accident and die. And the boy walked out. When he went to put that item on his dad's car, fire 
erupted, Holy Ghost fire, and covered the vehicle. He went back and said, now you see, the vehicle is covered by fire. And they said, we will try plan B. Do this. Make sure you disturb your dad so much until he get confused so that you know, he will not be able to pray the way he's praying now. And the boy was given a method. A method of, of threatening, disturbing the father until the father gets confused, gets so painful, and withdraw from serious prayer. The boy tried it. Tried it. But, but the dad went on in prayer. And before he went further, I was able to arrest him by the anointing. And I said, no, you need to get him. I, actually, he fell down and confessed all the truth, all the plans. You see, friends, they, they were not able now, uh, they, they, they could not remove or suppress the truth. They said, this miracle is known by all people. If we try to arrest these people, they will be riot. They are followers. Are many, 5,000 and beyond. What do we do? Let us severely threaten them. Let us promise maybe to kill them. Let us promise them a severe punishment so that we will be able to instill fear and they will not be able to preach again. And that's what they did. They really threatened John and Peter. And you realize that uh, as they threatened them, Peter was able to tell them wh whether it is right. He said, you people, although you threaten us so much, is it right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God? And Peter had a second, the second thing. He said, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. We cannot stop. And <coughs> as they walked out, they were threatened severely. And they noticed, we need to take action. And they went and called other disciples and gathered for a serious joint prayer of agreement. And the prayer had specific specific way or issues to address. And they spoke. I like the warfare prayer. They said, now God, look at Herod. Look at Pilate. Look at this man. They arrested your son, the Holy One. They killed him. But God, you raised him from the dead. Now, they are stretching out their hands to threaten our lives. And they prayed and they prayed, and they said, now, Lord, we ask for one thing. Empower us that we speak your word with all boldness. Lord, the threats are releasing feelings of fear. We are not able to speak the way we ought. Remove fear from us. Drain it. Remove it. And cause us now. Not to fear again, but to speak your word with all boldness. I said to you, friends, if you want to be a winner, we must pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit until the Holy Ghost drains all the fear and cause you to speak and to live with all boldness. I declare to you a life of a winner. I now call you from that pit. In, uh, in Psalms chapter 40, I remember the devil saying, God, you remove me from a horrible pit, from a slippery pit. The pit is dreadful. You inclined to my cry, and you raised me up and caused me to stand on the rock and put on my mouth a new song. I said to you, I want now by anointing to call you out of the horrible pit. And the pit has slippery sides. 
The devil makes sure you can't get out because it's slippery. You try to leave. It's as if you're mark timing. You try to climb up, you got down. Climb up, you got down. You try to get money. Climb up, you got down. You try to settle with your husband. You climb up this day, tomorrow, you are quarreling. You try to rejoice with your children. Today they are happy, they are performing. Tomorrow they are down. We call that the experience of sleepily pit. Sleepily horrible pit. It is horrible and sleepily. In January, you started off. You had a loan. Acquired a loan for business. By June, you feel you are good. By December, you are back. Sleepily pit. God remove you now from it as I speak in Jesus Christ's name, the Son of the living God. Get out. The head of God, you establish you on the rock. Instead of slippery ground, God establish you on the rock. Put on you a new song and cause you to be a sign of his glory and his prosperity. Hallelujah. Now, threat. And they said, God, we want two things. One, grant to your servants. It's you and me. My father, I want to make a prayer now. Grant to your servants that with all boldness, grant to all girls in the church, grant to all men in the church, grant to all husbands and wives in the church, Grant to all business people in the church. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. They may speak your prophecy. They may command their businesses. They may command sale and marketing. They command ways in the market. They command way in the street. They command way in their families. They command way and destroy Christ. My glorious king, I pray, grant to your servants, grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Number two, stretch out your head, verse 30, to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. There is always a very good thing, experience, when we claim the proof of God. Elijah claimed it on the mountain. He said, God, answer me with the fire. Answer me with the fire now, that these people will know today you are the only God in Israel. Number one, only God, the distinction of our God. Only God in Israel. And number two, that they may know my mission, whatever I'm doing, is you who sent me. And number three, that they will know I'm your prophet. Three things. Confirm the source of the message. You are the source. Confirm the messenger. The me confirm the message. And confirm the messenger. Confirm yourself, God, now by answering through fire. Confirm my work and confirm me. And God answered by fire. There are times we claim supernatural intervention. God, they said, stretch out your head to heal now. And that signs and wonders will be done by us in the name of your holy servant. Jesus Christ. The Bible says, where they were, God granted in another manner. The Bible says, where they, are, they were assembled, where they were assembled as they prayed together, assembled together, that place was shaken. That shaking is a reflection of God taking dominion, destroying the roots and the foundation of the enemy. That place was shaken. Now, I want you to, to know two, two things. In verse 1, the place was shaken. That's the place. Which means God has brought power in two areas. 
internal and external. The external was shaken and the internal was empowered. The ground shook. That's one thing. And the persons who prayed were filled again with the Holy Spirit. This time the Bible doesn't talk about speaking tongues. It talks about they were filled again and they spoke the word of God with all boldness. I said the power deals with outside and inside. The outside, up, down, surroundings were shaken. And the inside was filled with boldness. God, give me power. Surround me with your presence. And anoint me with your presence. And the Bible says from that moment, the disciples were restored. They spoke the word of God with all boldness. Miracles happened. Even those who threatened them. Some of the priests started getting saved. The church multiplied. The church took dominion. The threats were dealt with. And I tell you, the church took dominion. Peter would walk in the street, heal the sick. His shadow could heal. Though glorious, glorious things happened, I said to you, in the name of the Lord, receive the life of a winner. The life of a winner is you never allow threat to take over. Go back to prayer and claim two things. Lord, grant me one thing. That I may speak your word with all boldness. Drain, remove every fear and replace it with the right boldness. And number two, stretch out your head. The signs and wonders you follow my life and my calling. Receive this. It can happen to you. You are anointed as a winner. The power you have is power from above, not from beneath. The center of power is not in your neighbor's house, but in the throne of heaven. Jesus is in office at the right heart of God. We can also start and tell people that Jesus I'm speaking about is alive and at the right heart of God at work. And that's why he is healing. Do you know why Christ said we will do miracles more than he did? He said, you will do more miracles than the one I'm doing. People never notice the, the product. He says, because I'm going to the Father. Yes, how? As I go to the Father, I'll sit next to the Father. I'll be your mediator. I'll be your I, I'll be your connector. I'll be your, I'll be your advocate. And because I'm there, whatever you ask in my name, because I'm just right where miracles are reached, I will be there to work them for you. I'm going to the Father where miracles emanate from. I'm going to the office where kingdom has its center. I'm going to the right office where now things come from. I'm going to sit at the center of power and kingdom. Because I'm there for you, you will do great things. Why? Because when you use my name, whenever I hear you use my name, claiming a miracle, I will tell the Father, do it. Friends, we have Christ who is just there for us. The office Christ occupy at the right head of God the Father it's not actually an office for the Father. It's an office for us who are on earth. When we finish the work, that office will not be functional. When we all go to heaven, Christ will not be a mediator. Christ will not be an advocate. But Christ will be our Lord and will share his glory. May God bless you with all boldness. May God stretch his head and confirm you with signs and wonders in ministry, family, business life, and in your seasons of life. In the name of Jesus, receive this blessing. That's the life of a winner. God bless you.